Joan Letting live for us from Nakuru. Elsewhere, Chief Justice uh, David Maraga has given a harsh verdict on how the country is being governed in a stinging address to an international audience in the United Kingdom. Maraga accused the political elite in the executive and parliament for cherry-picking provisions of the constitution, only implementing those that safeguard their personal or sectarian interests, citing a failure to tackle corruption and impunity, vote rigging and dithering in passing laws to help more women get into power. The CJ queried whether the new legal regime has worked for Kenyans, despite the same being praised as one of the most progressive and transformative constitutions in the continent. Well, in light of those sentiments uh, by the Chief Justice, let's now speak to Joshua Kipto, who is a lawyer and a speaker of the county of Nandi. Many thanks for joining us on News Centre this morning. These sentiments coming from the President of the Judiciary in the country. Um, let's begin with whether this constitution has really worked for Kenyans, despite being termed as one of the most progressive in the continent. Thank you so much, Linda. The constitution... I don't know how you say when you say whether it has worked because in um, adopting a progressive constitution is itself a good thing and we can say the country is in the right path having such a constitution. The question should be, if we do an audit of the constitution, can we say we have been able to implement or execute it to the level expected at the same time um, having in, having been able to to leave the spirit of the constitution, and that is where the gap comes in. So, if you look at um, the sentiments by Chief Justice Maraga, it now goes to the core of that discussion: Have we, are we leaving the spirit of the constitution? Are we genuine? Are we patriotic enough to implement it to the letter? That is the question. All right. Uh, even, even, even as we ask that, I mean, this comes in the wake of uh, calls for a referendum in the country. But will a referendum really impact Kenyans if the political elite continue cherry-picking provisions of the constitution, as the as CJ puts it there? Now, the, the, the question of referendum is a political question rather than legal question. Mm -hmm. The interest of the political class is basically, as you say, to cherry-pick and try to, to try to fit the constitution to their political interest. The referendums that we've done in Kenya before, the last one we did in 2005, it was basically a political thing. When you go to 2010, at least that one was an attempt to adopt the document wholesomely, yes. However, for this kind of referendum that is being championed right now, it is a political class uh, issue. But, and, and, and for me, it's a question of where we have failed to settle political contest amicably, we always resort to uh, legal means to settle political question, and that's why we talk about a referendum. I don't think there's genuineness. I don't think we have the um, we have the goodwill to actually fix the constitution. Yet, even what we've had, we've not been able to utilize it to the level it was expected, as at the time we were adopting the same constitution in 2010. Uh, but it seems bad politics is the basis of it all because um, the Chief Justice specifically points out uh, the two-thirds gender rule, for example. Uh, there was a schedule for its implementation within five years, a decade down the line. It has not been implemented. And the Chief Justice, they are rightly pointing out, this is only because its implementation will disrupt the patriarchal interests of the Kenyan political elite. How then do we change the system from being controlled by Kenya's political elite? Now, you cannot change the system and have it less controlled by the political system. A, a, a country is a political system in itself, so we cannot run away from the political class. Mm -hmm. It's a question of having a different political culture, constitutionalism as a political culture, because constitutionalism is not a one-off thing. It's a, lifelong, it's, a, it's a lifelong commitment as a patriot. Other jurisdictions have had the same problem, even in the U.S., their constitution has always been up for question, up for debate. Their Supreme Court plays a critical role in trying to interpret, in trying to align uh, their principles with, the, with their constitution. So we are not different. Mm. My, my proposition would be simple. Can we work on our political culture and align our political culture with the spirit of the constitution? If you look at the three arms of uh, government, the three organs, which is the legislature, uh, executive, and the judiciary, each of them has 
um, um, a blame to bear. For example, the executive has not been consistent. The executive has always been, it's like they're tolerating implementing the constitution. In any way they get a chance to muzzle it, they do that without flinching. They are the ones out there threatening the judiciary. Remember that after, after the Supreme Court decision, they went out and said that they will revisit, and surely they revisited. The legislature has been um, showing their muscle by virtue that the ones who are giving money, they dictate and they, in fact, they have turned out to be an entity that themselves, they cannot be oversight. They can be able to muzzle executive, they can play, uh, whatever, they can run rings around the judiciary, and there's nothing um, they can do. Look at the case they are facing right now with SRC, same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. All so right. it's a question of political culture. We cannot run away from the political class, but we can work on our political culture. Very pertinent issues there, of course, being raised by the Chief Justice. Many thanks. That is uh, Joshua Kipto, lawyer and speaker.